Please stand by. We are about to begin. Good day and welcome to the OGM Policies and Procedures Conference Call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Whitney Marsland. Please go ahead. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the overview of Grants Management Webinar. This webinar is a part of the series of webinars that we've been offering and that we'll offer um, throughout the winter for CED grantees. I am Whitney Marsden of ICF, and I'm joined here today by Harold Taylor from OCS. Like all of the presentations in this series, today's webinar is being recorded, and you'll be able to access it on the OCS Community Development website. Um, we'll be sending out an email following the presentation with information on um, where these materials will be available. The webinar material for the previous webinars in this series are also posted, so feel free to look back on those if you missed them or if you just want to take another look at the materials. Um, and as we schedule more presentations throughout the next couple of months, we will be posting the announcements um, on the OCS Community Development page. Uh, after today's presentation, we'll also have a question and answer session where you can answer questions, um, ask questions over the phone or through the live meeting. So now I'll turn it over to Harold, who will get us started. Thanks, Whitney, and hello, everyone. We are pleased to have Katrina Morgan with us today from the Office of Grants Management. She will provide both new and returning grantees with an overview of working with the Office of Grants Management to administer your CED grant. As you know, you will work with your program specialist from OCS as well as your grants management specialist from OGM throughout the life of your grant. And your program specialist and grants management specialist will work with one another to help you access your grant funds, administer your project, report on your progress, and meet the requirements of your CED grant. Katrina, once again, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come down here with us today. And now I'll turn it over to you, Katrina. All right, thank you, Harold. So hello, everybody. I am Katrina Morgan, as Harold said, the Grants Management Officer um, with oversight of the team who handles the Community Economic Development Grants and other grants um, awarded by the Office of Community Services. Um, the first slide here is just my contact information. If ever you're um, having a hard time you know, contacting a grant specialist or have any um, specific questions, you can feel free to give me a call or, or email me. Um, and later on in the presentation, I will have all of the grant specialist contact information as well. So <clears throat> just a brief overview of our presentation today. Um, we're going to talk about the roles and responsibilities of OGM in the administration and monitoring of your grants. Um, I'll give you some guidance on different federal policies, rules, and regulations that you should be familiar with in administering your grant projects. Um, we'll touch on the Division of Payment Management, um, which is now known as the Payment Management Services, but we'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, touch briefly on reporting, both financial and progress reporting. Talk about a couple of the most common um, post-award amendments that you may need during the life of your grant, budget modifications, and no-cost extensions. Um, we'll talk a bit about federal reversionary interest, and then I'll just have some helpful websites for you, and there will be time for questions. So first off, um, we'll talk a little about the roles and responsibilities of the Office of Grants Management. Um, so, as Harold said, you will, throughout the life of your grant, be working both with OGM and OCS pretty closely, hopefully, on um, different issues that arise with your grant. We also work very closely together. Um, grant specialists and program specialists are in regular contact about all of these grants, and, um, you know, we, we work in concert to try to maintain um, good grant files with all of the information that we need and to convey the information that you need to um, be successful in your projects. Uh, we do have different areas of responsibility and expertise, and our roles are meant to be distinct but complementary. So OGM roles for grant administration. Um, we are responsible for the business and other non-programmatic areas of your grant award and administration. Um, we ensure compliance with applicable laws, federal regulations, 
policies, procedures, and um, can assist with technical aspects of your grants, um, grant projects and fiscal monitoring of your grants. Uh, we are also the official receipt point for the SF-425, the Federal Financial Report, um, and any requests for prior approval. Now, um, these days, the, the system for those for receipt of those documents is um, Grant Solutions. So hopefully you are all very familiar with Grant Solutions at this point. And we will touch on that a little bit more later in the presentation. So the major things that you should be contacting OGM for include um, requests for amendments to your original grant application, such as changes in key personnel. And again, the procedure for doing that would be to submit a request through Grant Solutions, but if you ever have questions about it, you can t contact your grant specialist for guidance. Um, you would contact us for clarification of budget issues, uh, particularly allowability of costs for your grant project. And um, if you require guidance on submitting fiscal reports or completing fiscal reports and other official correspondence, you should contact us. So you should um, have a grants management specialist identified in Grant Solutions as your contact point. Um, on the next slide, I have the, the chart. Uh, we have regional assignments. So um, if you do, by some chance, have more than one grant from ACS, um, from OCS, um, you should have the same grant specialist across your grants. And um, these are really going to be your point people, Tuana, Monique, Tony, Kalina, Sandra, Brittany, and Marcus um, for any day-to-day -day, uh, questions or needs that you have with your grant. Okay, so we will move now into uh, some of the grant policy regulations and documents that you need to be familiar with as a recipient of an ECF grant. Uh, first off, on your original notice of award, if you look down in that remarks section down near the bottom, um, you can find a lot of important information there. And I always want to encourage grantees to make sure you're paying attention to that portion of your notices of award. Um, in that little section down there, it states that the terms and conditions for your grants are contained in the um, HHS grants policy statement. So the Department of Health and Human Services are sort of um, overarching departments. So if you take a look at the grants policy statement, you'll see that there are four sections. And the, the section that contains the specific terms and conditions for these grants is part four. Um, and the remainder of the policy statement is just um, you know, a good overview of the HHS grants uh, process and expectations for competition, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so all of our grants are, are um, governed by various federal regulations. Um, including uniform administrative requirements, federal cost principles, and audit requirements for federal awards, depending on your award amount. Um, previously, these were all published in different OMB circulars and codified in, in different parts of the Code of Federal Regulations for HHS. But in December of 2013, the Office of Management and Budget, OMB, uh, published a, a super circular or omni circular that will now contain all of these requirements. The uniform admin requirements, the cost principles, and the audit requirements will all be, are, are all contained in um, 2 CFR Part 200. And those are the general uh, federal requirements for, for grants. Um, the omni circular encompasses and supersedes the guidance that was previously contained in 45 CFR Part 74 and 92. Now, 74 and 92 are the HHS-specific um, codes of federal regulation for our grants that um, ACS and other HHS agencies administer. It also um, <clears throat> will contain the cost principles. Um, you can see on the slide the various citations for where these were contained previously and the audit requirements in, in OMB Circular A133. So, um, this is, is the new place we're pointing you to now. Um, on the next slide, you can see that HHS has published the, our implementation of 2 CFR 200 in a new section of the Code of Federal Regulations, which is 45 CFR Part 75. So, everyone um, 
should take the time to, to read over this and, and be at least passingly familiar with it. Um, and it is also a very good source if you have any questions about um, how your grant should be administered. Um, it's a good start for things like um, you know, payments, how long you can hold money in account, or um, the expectations for the types of accounting systems that should be in place, um, issues surrounding reversionary interest and how to treat property, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and there is currently a Federal Register notice and opportunity to comment available until February 17th. So if you visit this website here, you can go in and, and see um, all the specific citations, how, how 45 CFR Part 75 will be um, changed slightly from 2 CFR Part 200 to be catered specifically to HHS grants. And that was sort of the toughest thing I think we're going to talk about today because it's the newest thing that has come across for us. Okay, so changing gears a little bit. Um, hopefully by now you have um, at least become familiar with payment management services, formerly the Division of Payment Management, um, either by drawing down money or um, submitting a quarterly report. Uh, payment management services is a part of the Department of Health and Human Services Program Support Center which is a separate operating division from ACF. So they handle um, all of the payments and, um, and those types of services for our grantees. Um, PMS provides the payment and accounting system, like I said, for all of our grants. And um, you, as a grantee, um, are responsible for requesting payments directly from payment management services and for uh, submitting quarterly payment management system reports. Um, it's a part of the federal financial report, but it's the sort of the disbursement um, and, and cash transaction part of the report. Um, so, like I said, those payment management system reports are quarterly. Um, and we do want you to know that a lot of times working with payment management services can be uh, can be challenging because they have a lot on their plates and they are very busy. Um, so if you do have problems that arise um, in communicating or trying to um, get, take care of a problem that, that you may have in drawing down funds, you can always contact us. We, we, can't, we don't have direct control over what's going on there, but we can and often do act as a liaison for grantees and making sure that you're receiving your grant funds. And then I have the PMS website here for you. So moving on to reporting. Um, all of your reports are due semi-annually. Um, first here we have the program progress reports, which are um, really governed by OCS. And um, it's, so you have received or will receive um, guidance from them on how to submit the reports via OLDC. <coughs> OCS then shares the reports with us so that we do have a copy for grant solutions so that we can always access them. And um, again, semi-annually, so they're, they're due uh, after the second and fourth quarters during the fiscal year of, your, um, of each year of your project. And um, then there's a final report due 90 days after the end of the project period. So for the federal financial reporting, um, the due dates, et cetera, are all the same. Um, and this is, again, in the realm of OGM, since we are monitoring the fiscal progress of your grant. Now, both OCS and OGM look at both your federal financial reports and your program progress reports. And we do try to communicate um, if we notice that there are any you know, issues that seem like they require technical assistance. Um, so we do all see all of the reports. Um, again, due dates are the same. Um, so I do just want to point out that the, um, the 425s that you submit to us, the federal financial reports that you're doing semi-annually, should reconcile each year with that final quarterly report that you submit to the payment management system. Um, and that is something that we should be looking closely at and will start to be looking more closely at as time goes on. And you will submit your financial reports um, to, to OGM via Grant Solutions 
Um, you can contact your grant specialist if you need any guidance on how to do that. Okay, so moving on to the SF-428 and 429 reports. Um, these are reports that are now required annually. Um, they give you the, the opportunity to report on any tangible personal property. Um, so that would be equipment um, of value exceeding $5,000 per um, unit item or any real property that you've purchased or um, renovated or um, improved with grant funds. Um, if that doesn't apply to you, you do not have to be submitting these forms every year, but if it does, then you should um, take a look at those, and if you need any guidance on that, um, you can absolutely let us know. And then I have a slide here just stating that, you know, you can submit your original financial status reports, 428, 429 reports via Grant Solutions, or um, if you prefer to send them to your grant specialists, and some grant specialists actually kind of prefer this because then they can save them um, in the system with the correct naming conventions that they want, um, you can email them directly to your specialists. So we've been talking about grant solutions here on and off throughout the presentation, and um, I'm not going to talk too much about it now, but um, I just want to say that it is a, it's a relatively new system, although it's been around for three, four years now. Um, it gives you control as the grantee over submission of post-award amendments, and we really strongly encourage you to go into the system and take an active role in, in submitting um, documentation and information through the system. That said, we do want you to continue to, communicating, to communicate with your um, grant and program specialists outside of the system. Um, you don't have to create a grant note every time you have a question. You can still email us. It's probably better to, to contact us directly if there's something that you need answered right away. Um, so further with Grant Solutions, uh, there are a, a couple of different types of user roles that can be identified in the system. Uh, we try to assign these when the grant is new and we base it on the people um, who have been listed on your application as the um, program director or the and the authorizing official of the grant. And only those two roles in Grant Solutions have access to make any requests or upload documents. Um, there are a few other roles, I think financial management officer or something like that, um, that you can give to people in your organization if you want them to be able to view um, the, your grant file in the system, but they will not be able to make changes um, to anything in the system or add any documentation. Uh, OGM is responsible for ensuring that these roles, um, these people with these roles have access to grant solutions. So if you have questions or problems with this, please uh, follow up with your grants management specialist and they can help you make sure the right people in your organization have the right access. So throughout the life of your grant project, um, you may find that there are times when you need to make modifications to your, your budgets or um, your program plans. And in those cases, you should submit a budget, budget modifica modification, I'm sorry. Um, report any modifications to the budget and program activities as outlined in the original application. This includes any kind of change in the scope or the plan for your project um, and key personnel changes. Uh, we have a reference here to 45 CFR. I didn't catch that in, in fixing the, or when I was updating the, the slides um, the other day. So, so this will now be contained in a section, 45 CFR Part 75, where you can um, see more specific information about budget, but oh my goodness, I can't say that today. Budget modifications. There we go. Okay, so prior approval is necessary for any of the following changes here. Um, extension of a budget or project period, change in the scope of work, as I mentioned, or objectives, um, change in key personnel, such as the project director or principal investigator, um, absence for more than three months or 25% reduction in time devoted to the project by the identified um, project director, or any kind of significant rebudgeting that would exceed 25% of the total project budget. There are instructions available in Grant Solutions for requesting budget modifications and other um, post-award amendments to your award. 
and you'll just be required to fill out some standard forms there in the system, and then you'll be able to upload a cover letter and a budget narrative. So the other major um, post-award amendment that, that we see with, with these types of grants would be the no-cost extensions. Uh, <clears throat> extensions, we can grant extensions for up to 12 months past the original uh, project period end date. Uh, and extensions are, are only to be used to complete project activities that were previously approved. Um, we shouldn't be asking for extensions just because you've gotten to the end and realize you have money left over or to add any new activities to the grant. We like to see requests um, about 45 days prior to the end of the project period. Um, but of course, if, as long as you can let us know before the end of your project period that you're, it's looking like you're going to need an extension, um, we'll do our best to try to um, get those taken care of quickly. Um, and like I said, no cost extension does not authorize additional spending or any new activities beyond what was originally approved. Now for our, our grantees who have uh, five-year budget and project periods, uh, we want to make very clear from the beginning that um, based on federal appropriations law, um, funds expire at the end of a five-year period. So after your original project period ends, you will not be able to draw down any additional funds. So you can have a no-cost extension to continue activities, but you need to uh, make sure that your funds are uh, obligated and drawn down by that original project period end date. Um, this doesn't apply to three-year grantees, those non-construction grants, um, because uh, as long as the appropriation is still active, we can, you can continue to have access to your funds. Um, so again, no-cost extensions can still be granted, but any grant funds not drawn down by the end of a five-year project period will be lost. They're taken back to Treasury, and there is basically nothing we can do to get them back. Um, and just like with budget modifications, there are instructions in grant solutions for how to submit a no-cost extension. Um, everything should pop up for you when you go in and initiate the amendment to tell you what you need to submit. So our last topic here, um, federal reversionary interest. Um, for many of you, um, your, your grant projects will uh, generate federal interest, whether by uh, purchasing a property or um, doing significant improvements or remodeling of a property. Um, in those cases, we require that you file a notice of federal interest with your appropriate locality, and we need a copy sent to the Office of Grants Management. Some of you may also have projects that involve loans or equity investments, um, so the, the um, other types of reversionary interest here. And you may have seen that if, if we saw a loan or, or an equity investment in your original project plan and in your budget, we restricted your funds. Um, we will release those funds as soon as possible once you have submitted the disposition of asset form that you should have received as part of your notice of award package. Um, if for some reason you didn't, didn't receive it or you're still on restriction, please be sure to contact your grant specialist as soon as possible so that we can get what we need from you. And that's beyond just this um, reversionary interest or the loans and equity investments. If for some reason you cannot access your funds or you see that you are still restricted, let us know. We try to follow up on those and be pro proactive, but we do have a lot going on and um, sometimes things get kind of set aside. So just give us a call whenever you need anything, send an email, and we'll try to do our best to help you out. So the end here, we have just a list of helpful websites or websites that I think should be helpful. And um, that's all I have for today. So I can open up to questions. Thanks, Katrina. Um, so with that, that's the end of the presentation, so we will be opening it for questions now. Um, you can answer, uh, ask your question over the phone, um, or you can submit your question through live meeting. To submit your question over the phone, you can press star 1. Um, if for some reason we don't get to your question on the call, um, we can follow up with you directly, or you can submit a question to um, OCS Registrar at icfi.com. Um, and again, we will be posting this um, webinar um, on the website following the presentation.
Um, it doesn't look like we have any questions through the live meeting right now. Um, operator, are there any questions over the phone? Yes, we do have a question from the phone. Hi, this is Paula Groves calling. Unfortunately, I was not able to um, see the live meeting presentation. So can you give me the website of where I can download the presentation from? Sure. So um, we will be posting um, the recording and the slides and the transcript um, probably uh, within the next week. Um, the website is OCS Community Development. Um, and we will also be sending an email to all the participants of this call um, with direct links to all of those materials and um, with the URL. Oh, okay. So you don't have the URL yet. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Operator, are there any more questions on the line? There are no further questions at this time. Okay, so while we wait for some other questions to come in, um, we just want to mention that we have um, a few more sessions scheduled in the coming weeks for um, the CED grantees. Um, and they are the Community Economic um, Development Program Overview Webinar. This will be um, next Thursday, the 29th, from 2 to 3 p.m. And then um, on February 19th, we have the 2015 CED and CED HFFI Funding Opportunity Announcements webinars. So um, you'll want to mark your calendars for those. And remember that if you have already registered for um, CED webinars that took place in December or January, you're automatically registered um, for these sessions, and you'll be receiving updates about um, the webinars and the login information for those. Um, so I'll just check one more time if we have any more questions on the line. I dare this is Katrina again. I do have um, just a point of clarification that, that came up in the room here uh, amongst us here at ACS. Um, for projects in which you are um, renovating a building or remodeling, um, there is a, a threshold over which um, the federal reversionary interest is generated. So if you're doing major renovations would be considered anything um, $150,000 or more. And then another, um, I think, point to clarify, which you may get more guidance on this later from OCS, but um, in construction projects, um, we do make a distinction between hard, hard costs, hard construction costs, and soft costs. Um, the interest is generated when you use grant funds for hard construction costs. Um, but if you're using them for, for, you know, costs that support the construction, those soft costs, um, we would not consider those um, as generating any federal interest. You wouldn't need a notice of federal interest for that. Okay. Okay, thank you, Katrina. Um, operator, are there any uh, follow uh, more follow-up questions? There are no further questions at this time. Um, okay, Katrina or anyone at OCS, is there anything else in closing you want to add or anything else you want to clarify? Other than just, you know, reach out to us, uh, communicate with us. That's what we, we need that from you, um, and, and we appreciate it. We try to get back to you as quickly as we can. Um, so, so use us as a resource as needed. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Katrina. Thanks for today's presentation, and thanks, everyone, for joining. This does conclude today's conference. Thank you for your participation.